Lord, we are your students. Teach us to read your word, meditate on it, and apply it to our lives. Give us a hunger for spending time with you and the wisdom when we teach your word to others. We want to be people who correctly handle the word of truth. We ask the Holy Spirit to enlighten us and give us understanding that we may live right and bring glory to your name. Amen. So I am going to give it a few minutes and wait a few minutes longer to see who else checks out the live. Um, had a late night, a rough morning. <laughs> Luckily, my little one is being a little bit cooperative right now. So he's in the living room with my siblings at the moment. Okay, but um, so the Bible that I'm using is the ESB single column journaling Bible from Crossway. It's just the basic black Bible. Um, I just decorated mine with some stickers. I have my Crayola Twistable colored pencils as well as the super tip markers. I have my Sharpie Smear Guard highlighters and then all three packs of the Zebra Mod Liners. And I have the Zebra F301 ballpoint, ballpoint pen in a 0.7 millimeter. But, um, yes. So, the goal for today, I'm going to end this live at 12.30 instead of 12, just because I got on late. And um, the goal is to complete verses 19 to 28. I'm hoping to get through that. Um, like I said, this first chapter is going to be in multiple parts um, just because it's so much. Hopefully for Friday's video, I can get through verses 29 to what verse is that? 42. That way it's not like a six part video. But um, it seems to me that we're going basically paragraph by paragraph, breaking it down um, in the Bible studies. And I think there is a mosquito in here. Lovely. But um, I do have post-it notes. I'm actually using the two that I was sent from Tanya. And um, I have this one, which is from Dollar Tree. It's to create your own sunshine. And I really like the watercolor detailing on this one. And then I have this one. I'm not sure where she got it from. Um, but it says, my plan, my way. It's sticky notes. Um, and I think it's from Dollar Tree. Because I know this brand is a Dollar Tree kind of brand. They make stamps and stuff for planners. So I think it's from Dollar Tree, but I haven't seen this one in my Dollar Tree, and it's super, super pretty. But, um, yeah, I'm going to take these out packaging. This one is whatever. <laughs> and this one, I might run to Dollar Tree today, actually, and see what I can find. Because I know they have planner stickers and stuff, but my Dollar Tree is always a little late with their supplies. But I'm going to use these two. You guys already see we're running out of space, like... I'm going to have to add a separate, um, I mean, another piece of paper in here. So I'm going to work on that, just adding two sheets of paper in between each chapter or each page because it's going to be a lot of notes to go through. But let's start off. Good morning, Angela. Good morning, Destiny. Actually, let me just message a few people to let them know I am live right now because I did get a few messages. And can you guys hear me fine? Let me know if the volume is okay because I know... The first one we did um, last Tuesday was not the best, and I didn't know until I went to edit the video for YouTube. So let me know if you guys can hear me.
Okay, thank you, Destiny. All right, I'm just going to dive in now because like I said, I'm gonna end this at 12.30. So we're gonna be doing um, this set here, which says the testimony of John the Baptist. So basically the first um, 18 verses were all about the word, how it became flesh and who the word was. And then the last few verses are gonna be four different testimonies from four different people. And the first one obviously being John the Baptist. So, um, if you guys don't know who John the Baptist is, I would say read um, Luke chapter 1 and I believe chapter 2 as well. But John the Baptist is the first cousin of Jesus along with the Apostle John. But um, he was basically the man that God sent to prepare the way for Jesus. Um, he did water baptisms, whereas Jesus did baptism of the Holy Spirit. And now we're going to read his testimony. So, I'm going to read it through and then... We're going to circle words, and then we're going to underline box and make our notes. Good morning, Tanya. Okay, so starting at verse 19. Let me make sure the camera is right. Um, and my son is running to me. Hopefully he doesn't come in. I should have zoomed in a little closer, but hopefully this is fine. But, um, okay, verse 19. I'm going to read from 19 to 23 straight through. And this is the testimony of John. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who are you? He confessed and did not deny, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, what then are you, Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? And he answered, no. So they said to him, who are you? We need to give an answer to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight way. I'm sorry. Make straight the way of the Lord as the prophet Isaiah said. So basically in this paragraph, we see that the Pharisees, um, not the Pharisees, the priest and the Levites um, came to him asking him who he was because they wanted to give an account to the ones who sent them in. And he's basically telling them, like, I'm not the Christ. I'm not the one who you are all looking for. I'm not the Messiah. But he's the one that is making um, a way for Christ to do his work. He is the messenger. He is the light that reveals who the light is. Um, and obviously, they make mention to Elijah and Isaiah. But let me open up my notes now. And we're going to define. So... The first word that I circled was testimony. I will, hmm. yeah, I'm going to, I circled Jerusalem. I was going to do a different kind of marking for that, but circle Jerusalem. And I think those are only two words for this paragraph. So testimony in Jerusalem. I don't know where I'm going to, I'm going to write the definitions on this sticky note here. And let me just push this down a bit because it's a little up. Sorry guys, let me just fix the camera quickly. Okay, hopefully that's better. But um, testimony in Jerusalem. So for testimony, I'm going to write here. I don't know how to pronounce the Greek word. Um, I'm terrible with pronunciations of these Greek words. So the Greek word. Mm, Marti, I don't even know. 
I'm not gonna pronounce it. I'm not gonna attempt. Um, but it means evidence given by someone. So. evidence given by and Jerusalem I have the thing now where I like to look up the original meaning of a lot of locations because I know that a lot of the time the locations basically uh, have something to do with the characteristics of certain people or certain things in that location but Jerusalem means a uh, habitation of peace and it's the capital of United Israel and Judah so, habitation of peace. Going in with some color, I'm going to use this purple super tips for testimony. And this peachy pinkish color for Jerusalem. Okay. Good morning, Evelyn. So starting off, it says, and this is the testimony of John. I'm going to underline that first portion. This is the testimony of John. I'm going to underline the Jews. And I'm going to also underline from Jerusalem. So for verse 19, I have, this is the testimony of John, the Jews, and from Jerusalem. Going in, I'm going to use yellow for, this is the testimony of John. I'm going to use this green here for the Jews. That's a pretty green color, love that color. And this kind of goldeny yellow for from Jerusalem. And I'm going to use another sticky note because I have nowhere else to put notes. <laughs> I don't want to use this space just yet because I think I want to use it for this paragraph. Um, okay, so this is the testimony of John. Basically, this is where we begin to learn what his testimony is regarding Jesus, like I said, or mentioned um, prior to diving in. So I'm going to just make an arrow here. This is where we begin to learn what his testimony is about Jesus. move my highlighters and stuff over okay um the part that says the jews i'm going to use 
this lovely sticky note from Tanya. <laughs> and I'm going to write verse 19. Basically, I underlined that because this is the first term that is used to denote a particular group and not the whole body of Christians. Um, the first 18 verses, it was not really dedicated to a specific group. It was basically written for all who are Christians to read. But as we get into the next portion, we see that he's specifically talking about a specific group of people, which are the Jews. So, uh, first term... Used to denote a particular group and not whole body of Christians. In verse 19 again, taking this green, and then the golden yellow, um, it says from Jerusalem. Basically, this was a place where they killed prophets, and I do have a cross-reference to that. So, um, actually, let me go to that cross-reference quickly. It's Matthew 23 and 37. Yes, Evelyn, all is well this morning. Just just a late night and a rough morning, but everything is good now. Um, Matthew, what was it? 28, I think it was. 28, 37? 23 and 37. I'll write my note after I read it. 23 and 37. Let me just double check that again. Yeah. Um, hopefully you guys can see this. Let me just check. So here it is. It's the laminate over Jerusalem. Uh, verse 37, it says, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often would I have gathered your children together as hen gathers her brood under her wings and you are not willing. So we know that this is where they basically kill the prophets. So that's basically what my note is for that. Place where they killed prophets. Matthew twenty three. 37 and all the notes are written on that um chapter one live notes pdf you can download all of the notes for the complete um chapter one but i probably will end up editing some of the notes as we go along and then just re-uploading them so um if i do update the notes i will delete the old one let you guys know that i updated it so that you can have the updated format but um yeah Going to verse 20. He confessed and did not deny, but confessed. So I'm going to underline that whole thing because it's pretty confusing. Um, He confessed, he didn't deny it, but he confessed. Uh, so I'm underlining that. And I'm going to also underline, I am not the Christ. So verse 20, he confessed and did not deny, but confessed. Basically, John the Baptist was making it clear 
um, that he did not claim to be more than he was. He knew who he was. He knew he was just a messenger from God um, to light the path for Christ to do his work. He knew that he was just merely man. He wasn't this uh, Messiah that everyone was hoping that he was. So... John the Baptist made it clear. Where did my notes go? <laughs> so he made it clear. Uh That he did not claim to be more than he was. I am not the Christ. John was clear in who he was not. He was not Christ, but he pointed people to Christ. This hints that Christ was already among the people by the way he phrased his answer. Um, that's basically for when he says, I am not the Christ. So he understood who he was. Um, he pointed people to Christ and he hinted that Christ was already living among the people. So, hence that Christ already among the people. By how he phrased his answer. The cross reference for that is Acts 13 and 25. So I'm going to flip to Acts 13 and 25. And as John was finishing the course, he said, What do you suppose that I am? I am not he. No, but behold, after me is one, I'm sorry, after me one is coming, the sandals of whom feet I am not worthy to untie. So he's basically saying that, you know, I'm not Christ, but there is one who's coming right after me who is already among you that will be the one that you're looking for. Verse 21, what then are you, Elijah? I'm going to underline that. And I'm also going to underline, are you the prophet? Now, I have a bunch of cross-references for this part, but um, I'm not going to read them all for that. So, let's get some color. I'm just really loving these super tips right now because they're like so awesome and they don't bleed through. Um, and again, I'll show you guys quickly the back of my page so you can see. The super tips don't bleed through, but obviously because you do um, keep them at one point for so long, that will obviously bleed through. But I think that's with any um, pen or marker that you use when you lean on one spot for too long. There is ghosting, but it's not terrible and I don't mind it. So, um, the super tips rock as highlighters in your journaling bibles, especially since you get so many colors. And I always get the 50 pack, so you end up with 50 colors. I mean, you don't want to use all of the colors, like the dark ones, but, um, they're great. And I want to use this pretty blue. Okay. Uh, no, I'm not going to use the blue right under blue. That would be terrible. <laughs> Let's go with the peach color. 
Okay. So I'm going to write my notes on this loose leaf here because I have a few things to say. Let me just stick this back here. Like I need a really large work desk because these tables I have, I have like four tables in my room right now and they still aren't enough. So I'm going to have to get like a really large work desk soon. Probably try to get the one Angie has because I really, really love the one she has. Um, but okay, so I'm going to write V21. So what then are you, Elijah? Basically, they wanted to associate with him. Uh, I'm sorry. They wanted to associate him with Elijah because of his personality and the promise or the prophecy that Elijah would come before the day of the Lord. However, Jesus noted that John the Baptist was the fulfillment of Elijah in office and spirit. Gabriel even told um, Zechariah his son would go in spirit and power of Elijah. And I don't know why. This just uh, blurred out. <laughs> okay. That got blurry. But there we go. So, um, what then are you, Elijah? He wasn't Elijah, but he was in essence Elijah. So, hopefully that makes sense. And I'm going to read all the cross-references to you guys. But, um... They wanted to Oh my little one is coming. I hear him. Yes, Bob. <laughs> oh god, he said I'm hiding. Let me go see what the little one wants quickly. And I am back, ladies. Um while I was fixing him something, I went and grabbed me some grapes to munch on. And I just realized I didn't have my glasses on. <laughs> so I should probably put those on because that's probably why I'm straining to see the words. I can't get out the little thing. Pop on my glasses right now. Sometimes I forget that I have to wear glasses now because I'm so used to just not wearing them. But, oh yes, I can see everything much clearer. <laughs> Alrighty, um, thanks Evelyn, I am too, I really do love the Gospel of John, um, I just think it's one of those books that everyone should read, like, I did get my fiance a Bible, and, um, he even asked me, like, where he should start, and I told him the Gospel of John, I think John, Psalms, and Proverbs should be, like, the three books every christian whether you're a new christian or a mature christian should read because those three books of the bible are like really profound and just the gospel according to john really teaches you who jesus is more so than what he does um i love the other gospels but they really go into the work of what he does whereas the apostle john really talked about who jesus was um and what he came to do um his purpose so yeah <laughs> Tanya, yeah, he he wanted to say good morning to you guys, so I let him say good morning. I'm gonna have him in a video soon on my channel, so I don't know when, but I'm gonna put him in a video, and it's probably gonna be a video on how to do like Bible stuff with your kids or something like that. So I'm working on that video. Just gotta figure out when. What? Okay. That great was really good, but yeah. Okay. So they wanted him to be. They wanted to associate him with Elijah because of his personality and the promise. That Elijah would come 
before the day of the Lord. Jesus <clears throat> notes that he is Elijah in office and spirit Gabriel, and if you don't know who Gabriel is, he's the angel that um, spoke to Zachariah. And I think he spoke to Elizabeth as well. I believe so. <laughs> um, Gabriel even told, and Zachariah is uh, his, John the Baptist's father. So Gabriel even told Zachariah his son would go. in spirit and power of Elijah and the cross references I have are there are so many <laughs> um, not a lot probably like six I think or five I think it's five or six but um we have Malachi chapter 4 verses 5 through 6 um, Matthew 11 and I'm actually going to read them all. I'm not even going to like not read them. I'm going to read every last one of these cross references. So Matthew chapter 11 verses 13 to 14. Another one from Matthew, which is 17, 10 through 13. We have Mark chapter 9 verses 11 through 13. And then Luke chapter 1, 17. So I'm going to read all of those, but let me just do this one. Verse 21 again with the gray. Okay. Um, trying to see if there's any others in here I haven't used yet. I think these four. But okay, so starting off with Malachi 4, 5, and 6. Let's go back to Malachi 4. So hopefully this is in frame enough for you guys to see it. Um, let me check. <laughs> yeah, so 5 and 6, it says, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes, and he will turn the hearts of fathers to their children and the hearts of children to their fathers. Least I come and strike the hand, I'm sorry, least I come and strike the land with a decree of utter destruction. So this is um, the prophecy of Elijah the prophet coming before the day that Christ comes. Then we have Matthew 11, 13 to 14. Here it is. So um, it's right here, 13. You guys can see that. So for all the prophets and the law prophesied until John... If you are willing to accept it, he is Elijah who is to come. So this is Jesus now talking about um, John the Baptist as the messenger. We have Matthew 17, 10 to 13. Which is here. Um, so 17, 10 to 13. This is about the transfiguration. But um, it says, and the disciples asked him, then why do scribes say that first Elijah must come? He answered, Elijah does come and he will restore all things. But I tell you that Elijah has already come and they did not recognize him, but did to him whatever they pleased. So also the son of man will, per I'm sorry. So also the son of man will certainly suffer at their hands when the disciples understood that he was speaking to them of John the Baptist. So, um. You know, they're asking him, like, wasn't Elijah the prophet supposed to come before you? And he's saying that Elijah, you know, was supposed to come and he did come. But no one really recognized um, Elijah's spirit within John the Baptist. We have Mark 9, 9. Um, and it's 11 through 13, which is down here. 
So here it is. Um, so Mark 9, 11 through 13, the same thing with the transfiguration. Um, and they asked him, why do the scribes say that first Elijah must come? And he said to them, he being Jesus. So Jesus said to them, Elijah does come first to restore all things. And how it is written of the Son of Man that he should suffer many things and be treated with contempt. But I tell you that Elijah had come and they did to him whatever they pleased as it is written of him. So it's the same verse as uh, Matthew 17, 10 through 13. And now we're going to go to Luke chapter 1. Luke is another one. Luke chapter 1 has 80 verses, you guys. <laughs> 80 verses. And it took me a while to get through it. Um, but 17. And here it is. So it says, and he will... Go before him in spirit. I'm sorry. Let me go back to 16. So Luke 1, 16, it says, And he will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God, and he will go before the, before him in spirit and the power of Elijah to turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready for the Lord a people prepared. So this is Gabriel talking to Zechariah about his son um, who was to come. So that's all of that for that verse. Let me just check to see if there's any comments. Yes, Evelyn, Romans. I'm actually restudying Romans with my church. Actually, we just finished studying Romans. But um, the first time that I studied Romans, I honestly did not like it. I didn't, I didn't. It's not that I didn't like it, but I didn't get a lot out of it. And um, I think it's because I didn't know enough about the way I wanted to study. Um, and when I first started studying John and Romans, I didn't do the method that I do now. I was just reading, taking notes, looking at commentaries to get help. Um, but this second time around when my church studied Romans, I was really pulling out of a lot of stuff. So um, I definitely am enjoying Romans. I'm definitely going to be reading through it all over again um, because I don't, I don't, I haven't gone to Bible study all the time with my church. My church is in a whole different state. Um, my church is in New York. I'm from New York. I live in Jersey, so it's kind of hard to go to Bible studies. Like Tuesday, we spoke, we have Bible studies every Tuesday, but I'm not going today. And we didn't have it last Tuesday because it was like storming. But um, yeah, Romans is a really good one, and I, I'm thinking once I restudy it, I'm going to love it even more. But um, okay. So, are you the prophet? Is the next part for this verse so basically moses promised a prophet back in time to come that's simple that's as really as simple as it is moses promised him a prophet back in time so i don't know if this is in frame yes okay what this is and why but um yeah so Moses promised a prophet that's in Deuteronomy 18 and it was 15 to 19 yes I'm going to read Deuteronomy 18, 15 to 19. So here it says, a uh, new prophet like Moses. Um, so I'm going to read 15 to 19. It says, Lord, your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you, from your brothers. It is to them, I'm sorry, it is to him you shall listen, just as you desired of the Lord your God as Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God or see this great fire anymore, at least I die. And the Lord said to me, they are right in what they have spoken. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their brothers and I will put my words in his mouth and he shall speak to them all that I command him. And whoever will not listen to my word, that he shall speak in my name, I myself will require it of him. I'm sorry, require it 
yeah okay sorry so that's just the prophet that moses had um promised to the people that god promised so moving on to 23 because i don't have anything for 22 but um they are basically asking him if he's not elijah and he's not the prophet then who is he so that they can go back and tell the people who sent them from jerusalem so on 23 it says the voice of one crying out. It says, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. So I'm going to underline the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. And then I'm going to also underline, make straight the way of the Lord. And also, as the prophet Isaiah said. So, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. As the prophet Isaiah said. So. Um, okay, let's stick the sticky note. <laughs> okay, I'm actually going to write my other note on here real quick before I stick it down. So, verse 23. Um, so the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Basically, John the Baptist begins to explain his work. John the Baptist begins to explain his work. Let me just mark this with the blue. And stick it here. my computer in so it doesn't die okay um the next part is make straight the way of the lord verse 23 so basically it's a spiritual highway um and preparation of believers for Christ to come. His baptism prepared people, cleansing them for the coming king. And I do have a cross reference for that, so. Spiritual Highway. And preparation. Of believers for Christ to come his baptism I don't know why I capitalized that whatever his baptism prepared people are they really arguing about Chuck E. G's my son and my sister are funny. Cleansing them for the coming king. Here my son comes. Yeah! <laughs> the cross reference I have is Isaiah 40 and 3. Um, so again, it says make straight... The way of the Lord basically is a spiritual highway and preparation of believers for Christ to come. John the Baptist baptisms prepared people um, and they cleansed them for the coming king. So Isaiah 40 and 3, I will read quickly. Isaiah 
So 40 and 3 is here. It says, A voice cries in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. And then, as the prophet Isaiah said, Oh, my finger is itchy. Okay, so, as the prophet Isaiah said, I really only just have cross-references for that which are Matthew 3 and 3. Like, I have no note, just cross-references. Yes, Christian. Come in. He is knocking on the door and I told him to come in. But um, Matthew 3 and 3, Matthew 4 and 14, and then Matthew 12 and 17. Come in. Yes. Yes, my love. You want to go to Chuck E. Cheese? Uh huh. Okay. Tell Daddy. Okay. Okay. You're going back to Daddy's house tomorrow, so you can tell Daddy to take you to Chuck E. Cheese. Okay. Uh mm -hmm. Okay. Now can you go? Mommy's teaching. Okay. You want to see what? The eyebrows. What's, what's the eyebrows? It's, it's not eyebrows. They're cookies. No, just eyebrows. Oh, he don't have eyebrows. It's okay. Pussy. Chris, you're knocking the camera over. I need you to go step outside. I'm almost done, okay? <laughs> you just want your hand in the camera? Say hi. It's not my hand. So you're going to keep your hand there until you see your hand on the computer? Yeah. <laughs> see? Okay. Say hi. Say hi. <laughs> Wait, look. Okay. Well, mommy has to finish teaching. Okay? Chris. <laughs> All right, that's enough. Bye bye. Say no bye. No way. I won't stay right here. Christian, look. I'm teaching. People can see your hand, okay? <laughs> okay? So go ahead. Uh uh. Go. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Uh uh. Come on. <coughs> yes, Jaden. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> Is that you? That's a picture of your grandmother, your great grandma, your aunties, and your uncles. What about? You weren't born yet, okay? Dun, 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 dun. Yes, that's you. That's your school picture. Now go. Go ahead. Chris, I'm trying to... <laughs> oh my god. Come on. Let's go. Alrighty. <laughs> Thank you, guys. <laughs> Alright. That was interesting with that little one <laughs> but um so for the last part where he says as the prophet isaiah said i just have cross references from um the book of matthew sorry the gospel according to matthew um so i have isaiah i'm um, isaiah <laughs> I have Matthews um, 3 and 3, and for this is he who has spoken of by the prophet Isaiah when he said, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Then Matthews 4 and 14. So that what was spoken by the prophet Isaiah must be fulfilled. And then 12 and 17. Mm, 
this was to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet Isaiah. So it's just proof that, um, you know, the prophet Isaiah had a lot that was supposed to be fulfilled and that actually did take place and get fulfilled. So now we're moving on. Um, okay, we might actually be able to tackle this last paragraph today since it's only 1234 and I'm going to end in an hour. So that's good. That's good. Okay, so now diving into verses 24 to 28. Let me just go back to the beginning of my notes to the words that I defined. Okay, so 24 to 28. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, then why are you baptizing if you are neither the Christ nor Elijah nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water, but among you stands one you do not know. Even he who comes after me, the strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. These things took place in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. So I circled three different words. Um, the first one was baptized in verse 26. I also, what else did I do? I did Bethany. And also Jordan. So baptize Bethany and Jordan are the words that I circled. He is loud. <laughs> so let's use a sharpie no i want to use a mouth liner i really like these mouth liners um the zebra mouth liner highlighters are amazing they do sell them in target now um in the full 15 pack but you can get them in the three pack individually like this um from amazon there is a fourth pack but apparently that fourth pack is not like a real um pack from the actual japanese company but uh you can get these at target i think the price is about 16 between 15 to 17 bucks, I guess, depending on the Target you go to. But I do need to go to a Target to check out uh, those because I do want more of these because I really, really love these highlighters. And I really only use the fine tip. I never really use the bold end of it. But I do love these two pieces. They are like phenomenal highlighters. So baptize Bethany and Jordan. So, starting with baptize, the Greek word is baptizo, meaning to submerge in its a ceremonial dipping as a rite of ablution. Ablution? I think that's how you say that? I don't know. <laughs> so... Greek word As a right of, uh, I probably should have looked up what this word meant because I don't know what it means. Ablution. Um, and I don't think my nook is on right now for some reason. I'm trying to see if my nook will come on. Um, actually, let me just look it up on the internet. Yeah, I don't know if it's going to come on. It might be dead. I'm not sure. Um, so, ablution is the act of washing oneself. 
um, a ceremonial act of washing the parts of the body or sacred containers. Okay, so basically, um, washing of oneself. Got it. The next word I have is Bethany. I don't know if y'all can hear my son, <laughs> but he is funny. Um, also, so okay, so Bethany means the house of affliction or house of dates. It's the name of two cities in Palestine. So it means house of affliction. Or house of dates. Mommy. Yes. <laughs> he lost his strawberry milk. <laughs> So there's actually two places of Bethany. Um, there's Bethany and then there's the Bethany across the Jordan, which I'll explain once I get to that verse. Oh, Lord. <laughs> All right. So I did Bethany and let's just write the other one here on this sticky note. So Jordan. And I actually like to define these places and locations because I think it helps me understand a lot better um, what's going on in, in those times. But Jordan is basically a great river flowing due south, bounding Galilee, Samaria, and Judea on the east. It's the largest river of Palestine. So, largest river of... Palestine. Great River. Flowing due south. And bounding. Galilee, Samaria, and Judea. And these are all places that Jesus went to do his work and heal people and things of that matter on the east. I think that's it for what I had to define. So moving up to, what verse is that? 24. So I don't have anything um, underlined for verse 24. It just says now they had been sent from the Pharisees. I mean, you could define Pharisees, but I feel like I defined it somewhere else and I can't remember where. So you would define Pharisees if you didn't know what it was. But um, moving on to 25, it says they asked him, then why are you baptizing if you are neither the Christ nor Elijah nor the prophet? I'm going to underline that whole question. Why are you baptizing if you are neither the Christ nor Elijah nor the prophet? Um, let's use this purple if I can get it out. Basically, they wondered um, about his authority since he was not the one who they thought he should have been. So it's kind of like they feel like he shouldn't have the authority to do what he's doing because he is neither the people who are in authority. But um, he didn't get authority from man. He got authority from God to do the work of God. So I guess they felt like, um, you know, he wasn't in a powerful position. And you don't always have to be in a powerful, powerful position to do the work of God or have authority from God. Um, if God calls you, he calls you to do his work and that's that. It doesn't matter what man says or what anyone thinks of you. Um, you just do what God calls you to do, period. Okay. 
Okay, I don't know what that is, but um They wondered about his authority. Since he was not one and how do I want to say this? Um in a high position, I guess. Okay, so they wondered about his authority since he was not one in a high position, but his authority came from God and not man. And I think that's something crucial that um, we all should keep in mind. If God tells us to do something and gives us the authority to do it, we don't really have to answer to man um, about whose authority we work in because we work in the authority of God or the authority of Christ. <laughs> you can't wait to get home. <laughs> he is still screaming. Good Lord. Um, so going on to 26, I'm going to underline where he says, I baptize with water. And I'm also going to underline among you stand one stands one who you do not know. My pen running out because that would be terrible because I don't have an extra pen with me right now. So I baptize with water. Um, basically, John's baptisms, or let me say, John the Baptist's <laughs> baptisms demonstrated the humble willingness to repent, be cleansed, and prepared for the coming of the Messiah. Yet his baptism gave nothing to help someone keep clean. So, um, John the Baptist's baptism basically showed that you were willing to prepare your heart, repent, and be cleansed. Jesus's baptism was a baptism that really cleansed you and changed your whole being. Um, so that was the difference between their baptisms. This kid is screaming like a banshee. <laughs> and laughing and giggling. Today is my brother's um, 17th birthday, so they are out there just being silly. My little brother is 17. My other brother's 24th birthday is this is next week. Oh, my siblings are growing up. And before you know it, my son will be 18. <laughs> so um, this is verse 26. Okay, so I baptize with water. Um, his baptism demonstrated. A humble willingness. Oh, they don't call my mama on him. My mama on the cell phone or my sister's phone talking to my son. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Is this all in frame? No, it's not. <laughs> okay, so his baptism demonstrated a humble willingness to repent, be cleansed, and prepare for the coming Messiah. Um... Yet it offered, I'm sorry, yet it gave nothing to keep clean, 
to keep clean. And I think what I'm going to do is print out my um, notes today for the next session so that I'm not constantly looking at my computer because it would just make sense to have a hard copy of the notes printed in front of me. Yeah, um, I'll do that next time. Um, I have Matthew 311. Mark 1 8. Luke 3 16. I know this pen is not running out. And Acts 1 through 5. So starting with um, Matthew's 3 and 11. So here it is, Matthew 3 and 11. I baptize with water for repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Then we have Mark. I don't know what my son is crying for. So Mark 1 through, I'm sorry, Mark 1 verse 8. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And we know that the Holy Spirit, state, it dwells within you, it changes you, um, and it doesn't work in you. The water is not going to do anything but be more of a representation of you being willing to change for God. 3.16 of Luke which is here. Hopefully you guys can see that. Yes. Um, John answered them all saying, I baptize you with water, but he who is mightier than I is coming. The strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. And the last one is Acts 1 verse 5. <laughs> I do not know if you guys can hear my son, but just listening to him talk is funny. He will get popped for being smart out his mouth, though. But, you know. <laughs> um, okay, so Acts 1, verse 5, it says, For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So that's that. We're going to stick that sticky note over here because we just have so many sticky notes. So many sticky notes. Um, okay. I think that's it for that. So now we're going to move on to the part where it says, Among you stands one you do not know. And sorry for all the creaking. That's just my chair. Um, Among you stands one you do not know. Basically, John the Baptist was not the focus. Um, Rather, Jesus was. And he already lived among them. And they did not know him. So John knew that, you know, Jesus was already on earth preparing to start his ministry he understood that he knew who he was he knew everything these other people who claimed to be followers of god didn't realize that jesus was already among them they didn't know who he was they didn't care for who he was um and they judged and ridiculed and just did so many horrible things um though they said they they believed in god so i like that he said among you stands one you do not know because he was already living amongst the people, dwelling with the people. But um, they did not know that he was the Messiah. Um, I think the only ones that really knew he was the Messiah were the... the uh, oh gosh, what, what, what are they called? <laughs> Alright, I'm, I'm, I'm going to sound a little bit um, babyish right now with the way I'm going to say this. But if you know the story of uh, Jesus in the manger. And those uh, travelers came with the gifts, the three travelers... Yeah, I can't remember the story <laughs> clearly right now, but that's how I remember it at the moment. Um, so, yeah, not many people knew that Jesus was already among them. I think his parents, it probably took his parents a while, though they knew who he was. Um, they knew he was the son of God. It took them, I think, a while to realize it themselves. Um, okay.
So that's verse 26 still. John knew the focus was not on him. Focus. Jesus lived among the people, but they did not. Recognize him. Next for verse 27, it says, even he who comes after me. The strap of whose sandal I am not worthy to untie. So, even he who comes after me is one thought. And then, strap of whose sandal I am not worthy to untie. And I'm going to continue with verse 28. Um, and I'm just going to underline. These things took place. And Bethany across the Jordan because this is not the Bethany where um, we know of where Mary and Martha and Lazarus live this is another Bethany there's two Bethany's like I said in the city of Palestine so This orange is like so neon and I love it so much. I'm going to use a twistable for the last one. Okay. So even he who comes after me. Um, John the Baptist understood his purpose and mission. It was never about him, but the one who was coming to do the real work for humanity. So he never let his authority and power get out of hand. He understood his role. He understood where he was um, on the level of Christ. He knew that nothing was about him. He just came to do the work of God, came to prepare the way for Jesus. And once that was done, he was content. And we'll read about that um, in chapter 3 when that comes up. But... Uh, Verse 27. He understood his mission and purpose. It was all about the one coming to do the real work. Let me use the actual bold side to highlight. Okay. Um, it says, the strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. John the Baptist was basically humble and felt unworthy next to Christ. To untie the strap of a sandal was the duty of the lowest slave in the house. So he felt like he wasn't even worthy of being that type of person. He wasn't worthy of um, having that right to take off his sandals to wash his feet. So you could see that there was a true humbleness in him. 
Um, and I think that's a reminder that many of us need to have that type of humility. A lot of people don't have that type of humility. Once they get in a position and have authority from God, they feel like they can just do and say whatever they want. But that's never the case. You must still always work um, in the power of God, obviously, but also work with um, a humility that won't, how can I say it? Um, you just need to have a certain level of um, humbleness and humility in you to really truly do the work of God because um, the work of God is never easy, but you need to be able to stay humble at all times, in all seasons, and in all circumstances. Um, and that was something that John the Baptist was able to do. Even when they approached him and asked him who he was, he was humble about it. You know, he made the focus all about Jesus. He never made the focus about himself, which I absolutely loved about him. Everything with him was about Jesus. So, um, he was humble. felt unworthy to even do things a slave should. My little one is just not listening to anybody right now, so I'm definitely going to have to end it <laughs> today. So I have Matthew 3 and 11. Mark one and seven luke three and sixteen and i'm not gonna read these because i feel like I, I think i read these or yeah i did read these already um i read matthew three eleven. mark yeah i read them with the last uh part of verse 26 so i'm not gonna reread these to you guys but um i also have acts 13 and 25 which i didn't read did i read that one i feel like i read that too Yes, I did. 13 and 25, I read when I did verse 20. So um, those are the cross-references. And I think the last one for today is going to be, yeah, this part here where it says, these things took place in Bethany across the Jordan. So verse 28. He is just being extra today. It's going to be a long day. I'm going to take him outside today. Um, so basically, uh, this took place in the traditional place of the passage of the Ark in the nation under Joshua. Um, this was not where Lazarus was raised from the dead. It's a town or village on the east bank of the Jordan where John the Baptist baptized. My child is screaming up a storm. So... Not where... Martha and Mary lived. This is where the passage So this is where the passage of the ark and the nation under Joshua were. <laughs> nation under, un, uh, not of, under Joshua were. I think this pen is running out of ink. Um, village on the east bank of Jordan. Yep, this pen is definitely running out of ink. <laughs> and it's where John the Baptist. Oh, I'm going to have to take a pen for my mother because my pen is out, I think. Um, okay. Where John the Baptist was 
baptized. And I have Joshua 3.14 to 17. So, all right. So it says these things took place in Bethany across the Jordan. Basically, it's not where Martha and Mary lived. This is where the passage of the Ark and the nation under Joshua were. It's the village on the east bank of Jordan, and it's where John the Baptist um, did his baptisms. And the cross-reference I have for that is Joshua 3, verses 14 to 17. I have no idea what Joshua is, so bear with me. I'm going to have to look for that, because I don't really know what Joshua is in the Bible. Um, It's not before Judges, is it? Ha, yes it is. Ha ha. So I did know. <laughs> so 3, 14 to 17 is the verse. So here it is. Um, so then the people set out from their tents to pass over the Jordan with priests, bearing the Ark of the Covenant before the people. And as soon as those bearing the Ark had come as far as the Jordan, the feet of the priests bearing the Ark were dipped in the brink of water. Now the Jordan overflows all its banks throughout the time of harvest. Um, oh, I said all the way to 17, right? <laughs> so, throughout the time of harvest, the waters coming down from above stood and rose up in a heap very far away at Adam, the city that is beside Zerathin. And those flowing down toward the Sea of Arba, the Salt Sea, were completely cut off, and the people passed over opposite Jericho. Now the priests bearing the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stood firmly on dry ground in the midst of the Jordan, and all Israel was passing over on dry ground until all the nation finished passing over Jordan. Um, this is basically when um, Israel was passing over Jordan to basically go and conquer Jericho. That's what that story is. And I can't wait to read Joshua because I read a book that talked about the story of Rahab and it just blew my mind. But um, that's pretty much it for today just because my little one is being difficult with my siblings and I don't want to keep going. Um, so we basically managed to get from 19 to 28. I could have continued on to 34 since it's only, um, 12.06, but, um, my little one is not being cooperative right now anymore. So that is it for part three. If you haven't seen part one or part two, definitely check those out. Part one is in the video section and part two is actually live on YouTube. Um, part four will be up Friday, hopefully by 12 p.m., <laughs> I had difficulties last time because I wasn't in my house. I was somewhere else and the uh, internet connection there is not the best. So because I'll be home, hopefully I'll be able to get through that. And the goal for part four is to get from 29 to verse 42 and then only have one more part to do next Tuesday. So that next Friday we can actually start diving into chapter two. But um, do you guys have any questions at the moment? Thank you, Stacy. It's okay, Destiny. <laughs> I'll tell him you said happy birthday. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's pretty much it for today. I'm going to end here and we can pick up on Friday on YouTube. You're welcome, Evelyn. <laughs> Yeah, so the next session will be Friday, but it's not a live session. It's just going to be pre-recorded. So I'm probably going to record that video tomorrow or Thursday morning, edit it so that I can have it uploaded Friday, and then I'll have the link in the group. You can always just check out the files for the Gospel um, of John Bible study. It has all the links to every video and all the links to all of the um, printables as I upload them. So, yep. You too, Evelyn. <laughs> okay, ladies, so that's it for today. I'll see you guys next week. Bye.